Hi, this is a brief introduction to using the Citrix Computer Labs in the College of Engineering at the University of Arkansas. To begin with, I'm going to give you three important pieces of information that you're going to need. The first thing you're going to need is the Citrix receiver, and this is uh, some addresses where you can get it. The second thing you'll need is the address for the Citrix Computer Labs at the University of Arkansas. And then the third thing is an email address where you can get some help. Let's start with the Citrix receiver. If you want to stream a Netflix movie onto your computer, you need the Netflix player app. And by the same token, if you want to stream College of Engineering lab computers onto your computer, you need the Citrix receiver. If you open your browser, and today we're going to use the Chrome web browser, and put in receiver.citrix.com, it will take you to where you can download and install the Citrix receiver. That's all the information that most people need. Some people run into problems, very few, and for those people we've provided the long-term support version of the Citrix receiver also, and you can use that link if you need the long-term support. After we get the Citrix receiver installed, we're going to go to the uh, Citrix storefront and we're going to actually use the computer labs. So let's get started. I'm going to open up the Chrome web browser and I'm just going to put in receiver.citrix.com. And then I'm going to download receiver for Windows. Once it downloads, all I have to do is click it and run it. And it will install on my computer. When you do this installation, all you need to do is take the default options. If the Citrix receiver ever pops up, you might see a little box that asks you for the name of a server or an email address. There's no need to ever enter a server name or an email address in our Citrix receiver. And in fact, if the Citrix receiver does pop up, really all you have to do is minimize it because it's just going to sit down in the corner by your clock and wait for a Citrix receiver session to show up for it to work on. And once we get this installed, I'll show you how that works. Okay, the installation was successful. And you'll notice that there's now a little Citrix receiver icon sitting down there by the clock and it's just waiting for a session. So we're going to go to the University of Arkansas College of Engineering Citrix Computer Labs by entering https colon slash slash ctx dash storefront.uark.edu. Here you need to put in your university username and password. And don't put the part that says at uark.edu. Just put your um, first name or your username, I should say. and your password. Since this is the first time that I've logged on to the computer lab, it doesn't really know if I have Citrix receiver or not. So it's asking me to detect receiver. And I just say, OK, go ahead, detect it. But we know that we've already installed it. So I'm just going to click Already Installed. And now I'm at the storefront. Um, there's basically three options. You have favorites, desktops, and applications. I'm going to start real quickly with applications. These are the applications that my user account can see. Depending on your user account, you might see all of these or some of these or maybe even some different ones. Each account um, sees applications that are given to it based on the classes they're taking, the department they're in, things like that.
So it can vary from person to person what you see here. If uh, there's a particular application that you use a lot, you can add it to your favorites. Let's say I'm a big Mathematica user. I click Details, Add to Favorites. I click on Favorites, and now Mathematica is one of my favorites. Also, the other thing you can do with an application, it doesn't matter, any of these applications will work. I'm just going to use Mathematica since we started with it. If I click on that, it'll start up the application in a remote session. Sometimes it downloads this little ICA file over here and I actually have to click it. And then sometimes I might even have to tell it to use the Citrix Connection Manager to run that ICA file and initiate the connection. In this case, it knew to use the Citrix Connection Manager, and so the application is initiating right now. And there we are, we're ready to use Mathematica. I'm also going to start up Minitab here really quickly. The reason I'm starting up Minitab is because it has a familiar spreadsheet interface and I'm pretty comfortable with that and I know what to do to actually get some work done here. So I can put some numbers in these columns. And uh, once I've done my work, whatever that is, the next thing I need to do is save it. And one of the things that you need to be very cognizant of when you're using the application features in the lab, whenever you're using an app, is that there's really only one place to save, and that's the Documents folder. So when you save from an app, always make sure that you choose Documents. Um, if you save it to any other location, um, you're going to have a hard time finding it. Um, so always make sure that you save it here in Documents. In a minute, I'll show you why that's so important. Um, we'll see how the Documents folder works when we get to the desktops. So that's pretty much all there is to the apps. The apps are really good if you uh, want to focus on a single project or a single application without any distractions. And so they can be very useful for that. But sometimes you also want a general, a more general computing session. And in that case, you're going to need one of our desktops. If you click on desktops, you'll see the labs that are available to you. And for this particular demonstration I'm going to use our 3D graphics lab. All the labs are fairly similar except for the software that they have on them. Each lab has a different software configuration um, but all the labs are sort of set up in the same format. When you initiate a lab session it'll open up in the Citrix receiver window here and it takes just a little bit for this connection to get made and for the session to get logged in. There's a lot of things that that go on behind the scenes while this login is happening. All the different programs are accepting licenses and getting ready for first use and you've got network resources that are getting connected to the computer so that they're available to your use, printers that are getting connected, all these different things. So it takes a little bit for the session to get going. Another thing that you can do, you can just use this lab session inside this window if you want to. Frequently what I like to do though is just maximize it to the whole screen. If I don't want to keep my session maximized, I can change it back to a window by clicking there.
And in every one of our labs, the, the key thing that you're going to want to look for is this uh, folder right here, the Applications folder. If you double click on this, a couple of things are going to happen. The first thing is that you're going to see all the applications that are available on this particular computer from a single window. So this is the set of applications that are available on this computer. And from here, you can launch any one of those applications. The other thing that you're going to see as you click around in this Explorer window is this question right here that's going to pop up. What kind of access do you want the lab computer to have to your computer that you're working on? Um, this is the computer at your house or the computer in your dorm. And you can say no access, you can say read only access, or you can say read write access. Usually I like to give it read write. And what that does is it's going to um, attach the C drive from your computer to the lab computer so that you can copy files back and forth from your remote location, wherever you might be, to the lab. And you can see I now have um, the C drive of the lab computer, and then I also have the C drive of the remote computer. This is the computer that I'm working on and, and recording this video. Now it's a little tricky to get files, so if I go to Documents, you'll notice that, that we saved a file earlier to the Documents when we were in the app, and it was called MATLAB 4. And there's the, or Minitab 4, I'm sorry. There's the Minitab 4 file that we saved earlier. One of the things that we could do is we could copy this file that we saved to Documents in our earlier session. I could copy that to my computer at my house. And I could just click on it and say Copy. And then I'm going to go to the local disk and I'm going to click on it. And then this is where it gets a little tricky. When you click on that local disk, it takes you to the root of the C drive and where you normally save your documents is over here in users. Then you have to find your username and then you look for the documents folder. And then this is where you're gonna to wanna to save the file. And so that's a way that you can transfer files. By the same token, I have this uh, spreadsheet here. Uh, this is on my local computer at my house. I could copy that. And I could move it up to the Documents folder. Let's just put it here for fun. And now that's saved on um, the network at the campus. Um, the Documents folder is actually um, connected to your computer twice. It's connected here at Documents, and it's also connected as uh, the M drive. Um, if you notice here, we have ingerdocs.uark.edu shares. This is uh, the College of Engineering's document server. Every uh, person who uses the College of Engineering Computer Lab has their own special drive on that server. And when you click on that, you'll notice that there's a folder called Documents. And I believe I saved the book one spreadsheet in the Inventor folder. And there it is. So the M drive is an excellent place for you to save your stuff. Um, not only is it the Documents folder when you're using an app, but it's also connected in the lab session. Every lab session should have an M drive, so that's a great place to save your work. You definitely do not want to save your files on the, on the C drive of the lab computer. And the reason why you don't is because as soon as you log off, this lab computer is going to disappear. Everything that was part of this session is going to disappear. The machine's going to get wiped and it's going to reboot and come back as a fresh new session for the next person to use. So definitely do not save here. All right. The next thing that I want to talk to you about is
other places where you can save your files. If you have a Google Drive account or a Box account, you will have the opportunity to create an X drive and a P drive on, on your lab computer. And for more information on how to do that, you're going to want to watch the video that's titled Using Box with the Citrix Computer Labs at the University of Arkansas. And that will show you how to connect your box and your Google Drive to the lab computers. And that'll be also another good place where you can save your work. Okay, so you've we've toured the lab briefly, the lab computer. We've learned where to save stuff, where not to save stuff. And now it's time to quit. The main thing that we ask is that when you are done with your session, just click on this button down here and then choose shut down. What that does is it reboots the computer and makes it available to the next person to use. The other way you can do it, and this is also a viable option, especially if you're going to come right back. Let's say that you are working on a lab session and you want to keep your lab session running and you've decided that you want to go grab dinner and then you're going to come back and work some more. You can use this disconnect button. The disconnect button doesn't log off your session. It keeps the session running. Um, and the session will stay disconnected for about four hours before it actually decides that you're not coming back. And so if you don't, if you really are done with your lab session and you don't go over here and click shut down, what will happen is that it'll just hang out for about four hours. And then eventually it'll go, oh, this person's not coming back. I'm going to shut myself down and uh, restart for somebody else. Um, but if you click shut down, that'll shut it down immediately and make it available to somebody else immediately. So the option is yours there. You can either disconnect if you're coming back shortly or you can shut down. And that's pretty much all there is to using the computer labs. Good luck and we hope you get a lot of value out of them. Thank you.